Welcome to New Driven, Jimmy. It's awesome to have you here with us today. It's awesome to be on. All right. I have to ask you first, um, because New Driven's sole focus is on independent rock. So what do you feel are the pros and cons uh, between a band being tied to a major label as opposed to being independent? Um, well, yeah, there's lots of, you know, um, but the pro for me at least is that you kind of are in control of a lot of the, you know, every step of the way you're in control of, you know, from videos to artwork to, you know, how your guitar's tuned and everything like that. You know, the, the thing about a label is, is, you know, I mean, they're, they're basically there to make money, you know, and then make, at least fill their pockets. But, um, so it's kind of one of those things where you have, somebody higher up pushing you to uh, success but they're lining their pockets so it's kind of one of those things nowadays it's so kind of rough out there for bands to uh, kind of you know make a living that you know it's kind of like you don't need somebody ripping ripping you off you know you, you need somebody helping you out right. but uh, you know I I prefer to kind of you know I mean in the past, you know, a lot of the, the artists that we kind of grew up on, you know, they had people that worked at their record label that believed in them, you know, and nowadays it's kind of few and far between. I mean, you know, the labels kind of are, you know, there to make money, you know, and it's kind of like not a lot of, um, you know, artist support or artist development in that, you know, area, which is kind of sad because, you know, I mean, that's what you kind of, as an artist, you kind of need somebody there to, you know, how do you do that for yourself, being independent? You basically kind of have to, you know, you got to work a little harder, but, you know, it's that much more rewarding. But, yeah, I mean, you really have to kind of push yourself to, sometimes, you know, it, it, a lot of the, you know, stuff can kind of be a drag sometimes, you know, creating music's, you know, part of the fun, but sometimes, you know, I mean, business and all the stuff that goes along with it can kind of be a drag. But I just try to motivate myself, you know eat my Wheaties in the morning and all that stuff. <laughs> What's the best part about being in the music industry? Uh, connecting with people that you kind of, I mean, it's really a, a cool connection because, you know, I mean, I, you, you know, people, you meet people and, you know, I mean, if you, they gravitated towards your song or your band or whatever and you kind of meet somebody from Russia or Poland and they, you know, it's like you kind of have a universal language of music and it's kind of, that's cool to me. I mean, it's really, I mean, it, it took me a while to realize that stuff, but I mean, it, that's kind of, uh, you know, a good reward to kind of get, you know, touch somebody, you know, you never knew you'd even know. Yeah, I agree with that. So you, you put together Puddle of Mud. You were kind of the impetus behind the band. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, I, I, Wes was the last guy we had joined. I mean, it was up to me and my drummer to pick out Wes and this other guy, and we Wes was way better than the other dude. So it was kind of like, you know, I mean, I was 19 years old, you know, and it was like back then you didn't have, you know, Facebook or, or, or you know, MySpace or anything like that. So you just put ads on music stores, you know, like music stores poster boards and stuff, and it's, you know... That's how we kind of all hooked up in Puddle of Mud. It was just kind of like in this music store downtown that we all kind of had our, you know, names up there with our phone numbers and stuff. But And you wrote you wrote the songs Blurry and She Hates Me and some of their others. They, those are your songs, correct? Yeah, yeah. I wrote Drift and Die was the, like, the, the Drift and Die from the Come Clean album was the first song I ever like wrote so I mean uh, it was a, I didn't even you know I didn't think I was writing a song I just thought I was playing guitar and kind of making some words and stuff um, Blurry was a, a song that kind of you know was uh, it was a co-write I mean me and Wes did it together and uh, you know I had the initial idea for a long time I mean and uh, She Hates Me was the same way I had the whole idea for a long time and there was no record companies beating down our door then, you know, but um, Blurry was like a thing that was it's pretty cool because, you know, I mean, Doug Ardito, the bass player in the band, he, I mean, we didn't even know each other and, you know, it's like he kind of, he got to contribute to Blurry and I think, you know, a lot of the magic in Blurry has to do with Doug and it's like it, it came years later after, you know, five or six years later after I initially wrote the song. And, you know, Doug kind of added the harmonic part on the on the beginning, the acoustic guitar harmonic part, which is really, I think, makes the song. 
And so it's like, you know, um, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like you had, I had a song that was like a, you know, a root, you know, like a little weed and it, you know, five years, you know, six years, it kind of got changed around and this happened and big producers got to work on it and, you know, Doug got to add his little part and so it's kind of cool. It's like a song that really kind of grew, whereas like She Hates Me and Drift and Die are pretty much the same way as uh, when I wrote them on my couch, so... You know, but Blurry is something I got to get to hear. I got to hear, you know, orchestrated and, you know, rewritten and, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. Is songwriting your favorite thing to do? I mean, of everything you do in the music industry, is songwriting it? No, I, I, you know, I mean, I, as a songwriter, you know, as a songwriter, I, you know, I, I like creating I like create come you know coming up with ideas from scratch and kind of seeing where they go, but um, I would say just being able to perform and, and you know in front of people would be my my number one thing. Um, but you know in, in a close second, yeah, working in the studio, working on songs would be another thing. But it's you know I I have my insecurities with songwriting. You know I think everybody kind of does sometimes, but um, you know sometimes you you kind of have the the mojo and then sometimes you're like I don't know if I really have anything to say so I have to ask you a question last night I was going through YouTube and playing a whole bunch of your music both from Puddle of Mud and now uh -huh. and it hit me that you wrote She Hates Me and uh -huh. now with Against All Will you have Loved the Way You Hate Me so I was wondering if there's a theme going on there yeah a little hate theme a little hate <laughs> we got the new hate anthem for the you know, kids, kids in school. You know, but yeah, not, not, you can't have love without the hate. But uh, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I get asked that quite a bit. Or, or like, you really angry? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not really angry. But you know, I, I need to vent sometimes. <laughs> well, you're not angry, but she is apparently. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of all the songs you've written, which one is your favorite? Um, I would go. God, it would be, that's a that's a hard that's like picking out one of my kids. Yeah, I don't have any kids besides a cat. But um, I would have to go with "Drift and Die" just because I, it was the first song I wrote. It seemed so easy at the time. Like I was like, "Whoa!" I wrote a song and all the words like rhyme. You know, so it was like I think I was nineteen and you know eighteen or nineteen. I was like, "Wow!" All the all the words actually rhyme, and you know, so it, that would probably be one of my favorites. And uh. You know, in close second, would I would say would be "Love the Way You Hate Me" because it's just new, and I came up with it on top of my head, and somebody pushed the record button, and I was like, "Whoa, you, you got that idea down?" <laughs> kind of funny because the cello, my bass player, and me were kind of just kind of hanging out playing guitar, and he's like, "That was cool. What was that?" And I was like, "I don't know." And he's like, "Well, let's record that." And it <laughs> kind of came out, and it's like the original. The first, very first thing I played made it on the record, which, you know, is that first opening riff was, it, it actually made it on the record because we were, like, kind of trying to recreate it in the studio and go, well, let's do this and do that. And we spent about four hours trying to recreate it. And then I said, why don't we just use the original one? It's kind of cool that way. So the producer was like, yeah. So kind of neat. So how did you come to put together Against All Will? Well, after Puddle, you know, I, I kind of... Uh, you know, I was kind of in, I, I was in Puddle, out of Puddle, but, you know, I mean, I, you know, so I, a lot of people I was working with, producers, and people I was writing songs with, and other people were like, you need to just start your own band, and, you know, I mean, yeah, do the songwriting thing on the side, but you should, you know, you have all, you know, you have all these people that you know that would, you know, like to play and jam, and I was like, yeah, I, I like jamming, you know, I, I like jamming with a lot of different people, you know, I mean, Three guitars, four guitars, whatever. I'm not, I'm, you know, more the merrier, you know. And uh, so it gave me the opportunity to really just kind of, I had a bunch of friends in L.A. that were willing to help out. They, I mean, I, I tried to pay some of them, and they, they wouldn't take my money. I'm just like, yeah, this is really cool, but, you know, oh, you can buy me dinner sometimes, what they'd say or something. I was just like, it's pretty awesome to have, you know, a dude that's, you know, playing on somebody big's record come in and fill in for you and you're trying to pay him he's like nah nah I can't take your money it's no good here <laughs> but you know it gave me the opportunity to kind of because LA is kind of a, a weird you know scene I mean for any musician or anybody you know 
in general. But uh, it gave me the opportunity to really kind of kind of know a bunch of different musicians that were you know seasoned players and get to jam with them and learn things from them. And nobody had any egos. I mean, I mean there for a while it was like we. You know, I mean, I didn't even really know who was going to be in the band. I just knew that everybody was, you know, proficient at what, you know, their instrument. And it, it kind of, like, made, it shaped against All Will, really, because it was kind of like, well, I want it to be like this, and I want the bass to sound like this. And, you know, so it was really cool to just jam with a lot of different people. I mean, I think one week we jammed with 20 different drummers, and, uh, and it was, yeah, I didn't, I mean, I'm never in my whole life jammed with 20 different drummers, but wow. you know, it was really kind of a, a challenge, and it was kind of cool to learn things from. I really love the music of Against All Will, just on the side. I love your music. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you're, you're, you're who I write songs for. I, I, I want you to, you know, at least if you're, it doesn't make you angry, I want it to make you very happy. You said how much you love playing live. That's like your favorite thing to do. Uh -huh. Will you share with us a story, something that stands out that happened either on tour or at a live event? Oh, there's so many. There's good ones. Um, how about okay? We were we we were played at the House of Blues in L.A. and um, we went over to the Rainbow. And my bass player cello said, "Hey, there's Lemmy over there playing." You know. Poker, you know, Lemmy from Motorhead was always in there, and he's always playing the video game poker. I was like, oh, really? He he uh, really said some really cool stuff about Blurry in uh, like Guitar Player magazine. And Cello was like, let's go up and talk to him and tell him you wrote it. <laughs> so I went up there. And I was like, hey man, I wrote Blurry. You know, thanks for saying that. And, you know, Guitar World. Was, he said, yeah, I think that's the best, one of the best, you know, rock modern rock songs there is out there. He said. You need to keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, just do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just lighten it in a bottle, it just strikes. But it was kind of it was kind of a trip because, you know, it's like I really couldn't under he was drunk and, you know, I you know, I couldn't really understand what he was saying part of the time. So I was just like shaking my head, yeah, cool, let me yeah. He's like, You're an awesome songwriter and that song, you know, he's like really raving about it. <laughs> And I was like, wow, this is, you know, really cool, I mean, you know, I mean, you're hanging out at the, the rainbow or whatever, and that, you know, you get a rock god, you know, telling you he likes your song, and you'd think, he, I mean, I'd think, you know, Lenny would hate that song, but no, he was like, yeah, it's one of the best rock songs, in, you know, of all time, and I'm like, wow! Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Well, we have been playing all your songs, which cool. I love. Thank Actually, you. I have to tell you, I, I mean, I love the way you hate me, but I l really, really love another nail in the coffin. Uh huh. Are you guys going to do a video for that? Yeah, you know, I think so. I think it was a full production kind of video. I mean, I've been writing a storyboard, and I know, you know, that you know, there's been some cool ideas tossed around. And it's like we do our own videos, so it's like we wish we could have, like, you know, we wish we could have it out already, but we're poor musicians, and we're also kind of slow. So, I mean, but we want to, you know, we definitely want to do something pretty creepy and cool, and, you know, we have fun doing the videos, it's work, but, you know, somebody's got to suffer for our art. <laughs> well, I love that one. Can you tell me about the making of the video for Love the Way You Hate Me? Yeah, I mean, that was an, that was another one where we kind of sit, sit around and we're just kind of, you know, I'll sit down with the guys and I'll throw out my ideas. You know, it's like to the last minute kind of thing where it's like, I had the crazy bitch idea, you know, the intro thing. I had that idea to the last second. And I was like, how about we show the phone ringing and, you know, it comes up crazy bitch. And, you know, that was at the very last second of, you know, putting the video together. A lot of people get a kick out of that. And I'm like, I'm glad we did that, you know. But, yeah, we did most of it in Malibu at 5 in the morning. Oh, is that Malibu? Oh, yeah, it's Malibu. We're on that, so you see the ocean behind us and stuff, and basically what we're, what we're trying to convey is that, you know, we're kind of playing in an, an atomic bomb of hate kind of thing, and it's, you know, at the end it blows up and we're inside the fire and all this stuff, but yeah, it was Malibu at five in the morning, we opened up Starbucks that day in Malibu, and they are like, we were like, you know, wearing all this black gear and stuff, and they're like, well, what are you guys doing? <laughs> we're doing the video, you know? 
so we're up on this mountain in Malibu, which I don't know how we got really up there, you know, but <laughs> so we're like kind of playing, you know, we're simulating playing. I mean, you could hear stuff. You could kind of hear thud of the drums, but we weren't actually using amps or anything. But it's like we see the cops. Beep, oh, no. It's like, oh, crap, we're in Malibu. We're going to get a huge fine. They're going to, oh, God, you know, and they get up there and uh the cops get up there and they're like, oh, you guys are in trouble. What are you guys doing? And we're just like, eh, we're just, you know, doing our own video. It's like, when's it coming out, man? You guys got to send it to us. And, you know, we were like, oh, totally. Cool. Yeah, we made two, I mean, especially Malibu cops, you know. We, I we, know. I was going to say how rare to have a good cop story. Uh -huh. And they were really like, you know, like, wow, that's going to, we showed them like we had, you know, the GoPro cameras and some of the stuff, you know, that we were shooting that day, you know. And we are like, look, yeah, look at this. And they're like, whoa, you guys look cool. You know, so we're like, like, we're so relieved that we didn't get a fine, you know, because sometimes in L.A. you get shooting fines and all this stuff. We're just filming outside of a bar and stuff, and we were just oh, like, wow. as soon as we saw him coming up the hill, we were like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. What is next for you, and what's next for Against All Will? Well, I know more songs, more, releasing more stuff. Um we want to get some uh, the new some new video stuff, some new material, and some different stuff out there. I've been working in the studio and uh, kind of writing some new stuff, and you know, kind of feeling that out. But then uh, trying to get out and play some shows maybe this summer, try to do something. You know, we've kind of our shortfall's been touring since it's kind of expensive. We'd kind of go out there by the seat of our pants, and you know, kind of realize when we were halfway out there that we were broke, and we we're like. <laughs> we should have done this, you know. I mean, it's like we're not real high, a high maintenance kind of band or anything either. It's kind of like, wow, this is really expensive. We thought we were going to make money, but now we're paying to play. Yeah. <laughs> so we we've just got to be wise, wise in 2014. Well, thank you so much. I know the audience is going to love listening to this. Awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you for all the support and playing the music and everything. It makes makes us feel really good that we have, you know, people on our side, you know, I mean, we're just little guys, but we remember where we came from, because so sometimes we'll get people that have come up to us, and like, and they're like, we came to LA to see you, and like, where are you from, and they're like, well, you know, Boston, we had this, wow. this fan, a fan that's a friend of ours, Eric Barney, and he, he travels from Boston, and we were like, well, you're part of the crew now, and he's like, cool, you know, and it's like, so it's like, somebody that travels that far to see you, you know, you at least got to roll out the red carpet and stuff. Yeah, and you know, it means so much to them, and they become your evangelist. You know? uh -huh. And, it, and I, it's just an awesome win-win. Yeah, and it's really, that's where it's like, it, it reminds you, you know, the way it was, you know, probably in the old days, you know, in the music business and stuff. You, you get it, every once in a while, we get a glimpse of it, you know, and it's really, it's one of those things where you're like, ah, they, they, they really, uh, you know, took it for granted, but, you know, yeah. especially... I know me and my guys, we're really, we don't take it for granted. We like, I mean, I learn stuff from the fans, you know, what they, you know, how they kind of feel about songs or whatever, you know. Some of them are dark and some of them, you know, are just plain out, you know, cool people or whatever. But 